Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we have some more wildlife. This is my drawing of a wolf. I wanted to do a larger portrait of an animal and this was all done in charcoal. I used woodless charcoal pencils and some vine charcoal and in addition to that I also used a bit of graphite pencil mostly for sketching. So let's have a look. So I'm going to start with the sketch. I normally do a sketch with an HB graphite pencil. This is a Stadler graphite pencil. It's a good all-around pencil. And the size of my paper is 9 times 12 inches. Uh, it's not a very large paper size, but it's going to be a large portrait because the, the animal is going to be covering most of the paper. The paper I'm working on is just generic cheap drawing paper that I buy locally, so nothing special. And as for the charcoal I'm using, I'm using vine charcoal, I don't really know the brand, it doesn't really matter. And the woodless charcoal pencils are worrisome, but you can use any other brand. I'm going to be using a combination of a medium one and a soft one. So I started my sketch with the ears and now I'm moving on to the rest of the head. The eyes and the nose. Uh, I'm going to have some background but the background is mostly going to be dark and blurry. I didn't want to put anything specific in there so mostly focusing on the portrait. The head is right in the middle of the paper but slightly to the left because of the neck and the chest area <clears throat> but I think it's going to be a balanced composition because like I said the the head itself and the eyes are mostly in the middle so I already started working with a uh, charcoal pencil and this is a medium charcoal pencil that I'm using right now I'm starting to work on the outer shape of the wolf but I'm also going to have to do a little bit of background here so I sharpened one of my charcoal pencils to create some graphite uh, to create some charcoal powder I normally use charcoal sharpening residue for covering backgrounds I don't really buy charcoal powder I'm just I'm going to spread this around and use a brush to blend it. I'm not going to cover all of the background because naturally uh, charcoal can be very messy to work with so I have to work in a certain order and because I'm right handed I'm going to be starting from top to right uh, and I'm going to be moving slightly from left to right and from top to bottom. Uh, vine charcoal helps to make the blending of the backgrounds a lot smoother. Uh, because it allows me to create a more even tone and to move the compressed charcoal more easily. If I used vine charcoal alone, uh, w once I blend it, it would probably get a little bit lighter. It would be a lot lighter than I want it. That's why for the backgrounds I often like to use a combination of compressed charcoal in a charcoal pencil and vine charcoal. This gives me nice, smooth, darker backgrounds where I can also create some variation uh, I can create some darker and lighter tones, maybe create some suggestions of some blurry objects in the background like trees or bushes or something like that. But here I'm not really trying to draw anything specific in the background, I just need the background to create some contrast with my subject because some of the lighter hairs on the wolf will need to stand out against that dark background. Now another thing that I have to uh, 
point to is that I didn't really cover the background good enough around the ears and <clears throat> later you will see me trying to push more charcoal into that area because I don't want to create a light area surrounding the ears and the head uh, like some sort of a halo. Uh, I actually want an area of high contrast so that these uh, lighter hairs really stand out against the dark background and so that the edge is not too blurry because even when we have hairs uh, I don't want to have a blurry edge because I want, uh, I want my subject to stand out against the background as a separate object uh, sometimes you can make some uh, parts of it blurry and I'll talk about that as well a little bit later so now I'm working around the ear and I actually switched to a soft charcoal pencil for a little bit to create that dark area in the middle of the ear which is going to be very dark some of the darkest areas um, on my drawing area uh, on those ears and in the eyes and now I'm working on the hair <clears throat> now uh, this is not completely random I am uh, trying to imitate the appearance of the animal's fur by varying my stroke both in terms of its direction and length. I'm varying the direction a little bit so that it looks like real hair, so that it looks more organic, but at the same time I have to try to follow the direction in which the hair grows on the animal's body. The other thing that I have to pay attention to is the length of the fur because the length of the fur varies in different parts of the animal so you'll see that around the nose or the snout uh, the the hair is really really short but on in some other areas like around the neck and on the sides of the head the hair is actually quite a bit longer so I have to try to make sure that my strokes match that length and you may be wondering well why is that important if you're going to be blending everything well I am going to be blending but even when, even when I blend it a lot of these lines will still remain visible so that will be some kind of a texture and if I want that texture to resemble the texture of the fur I need to be patient when I'm laying it down because if I just scribble and don't pay attention to the to either the length or the, the direction of the hairs it's not going to look good I blend with brushes and I use a couple of different types of brushes um, I like to use hard bristle brushes to move the charcoal around because uh, they are very good blending tools but at the same time because they are hard and stiff they tend to push the charcoal into the paper so that's something to keep in mind because pulling highlights may be a little bit difficult the other brush that I like to use is slightly softer and it's synthetic and it kind of moves the charcoal on the surface a little bit more gently uh, but it doesn't blend quite as thoroughly also you, you'll notice that some of my brushes have a cropped tip uh, for more precision and in order to make, make them even harder so that I can really push the charcoal around in those hard to blend areas uh, another blending tool that I'm using is uh, Totillion, which has a slightly different effect than the brushes. It doesn't move as much charcoal at once, but it allows me for more precision because I'm using it to pull these individual strokes. And I'm doing I'm using it both to soften uh, the darker strokes that I created with a charcoal pencil but at the same time I'm using it as a drawing tool to create some uh, lighter marks which I would otherwise wouldn't be able to create with a, with a charcoal pencil. Another way of using a totillion is when you have a clean, clear or clean totillion rather 
you can use it as a sort of a mild eraser because when you go over it uh, when you use it to go over a darker area it'll actually lift up a little bit of charcoal and leave a slightly lighter mark so that's another way of using it as a drawing tool now I'm gonna use a pencil eraser and this is a Kohinoor pencil eraser which can be sharpened like any other pencil and I'm gonna use that on the top of the neck to the left to try pulling some lighter hairs to draw some of these highlights because uh, what I've noticed uh, from looking at the reference photo is that the the wolf's coat appears gray because it's a combination of white and black hairs rather than just uh, gray hairs so I have a lot of these lighter hairs, hairs and darker hairs but at the same time uh, we also have a range of value in terms of how dark or how light something is because of the light source which is naturally coming from above but also uh, mostly from uh, the right so I have to shade the animal in according in accordance with that and the important thing is to to remember is that even though I'm working on the texture of the hair and drawing in some of the details it's important not to get caught up in the detail and working too much on trying to make the hair and the fur look realistic but to remember to shade the whole animal keeping in mind the the relationships between larger areas of lighter and darker value and to do that the best thing to do is to zoom out of your reference photo every now and then or to look at it from a distance and to do the same thing with your own drawing as well to step away from it a few meters and look at it from a distance and try to see if the larger areas of lighter and darker value are actually in their proper place because what may end up happening if you just focus on drawing fur and you focus on every single hair and you really focus on the texture of it what may end up happening is that you don't shade the larger areas correctly and your animal actually ends up looking really flat even though you've put in all this work into creating a realistic looking fur so larger shadows and larger portions of lighter value are far more important uh, when trying to create a realistic drawing. Now a lot of artists would suggest that you first block in the entire drawing, that you block in uh, the lighter and darker areas. I sometimes use this approach but I don't really think that it would be appropriate here because I really am trying to work from left to right because otherwise I would be creating a huge mess because charcoal is a very very messy medium. As you can see I'm working on the eyes and <clears throat> this area around the eye and uh, down the this tear duct is super dark so I'm using a soft charcoal pencil and of course the pupil as well and I'm going to create a highlight by reserving the white space in it and I'm going to try to shade carefully around it and to uh, and I'm going to try to leave that lighter area I'm going to try to keep it clean and leave it almost completely white but because the re reflection in the eye is a little bit longer we're going to have parts of it that are slightly darker and those that are slightly lighter so we have a very nice subtle transition there as well so the part here to the right of the eye is going to be the lightest and I'm going to try not to touch that area with charcoal if I accidentally push some charcoal onto that area I'm going to try to clean it up using a kneaded eraser because a kneaded eraser is better for uh, for that because the pencil eraser would probably push 
some more charcoal into that white area and then removing it would be very very difficult so I think I created a nice highlight but I just need to uh, refine it a little bit and I did most of this work with the tortillion because I find that tortillions are really good for these uh, small transitions in a lighter and darker value where I need more precision where the brush simply wouldn't do because a tortillion with a nice tip can be a great drawing tool and I make these tortillions myself if you want to see how it's done you should check out my videos I'm gonna put the link in the description if I remember but it's not difficult to make them at all I, and I prefer those that I make myself because they are actually softer uh, than, the ones, than the ones that you can buy and they tend to get better with time as you use them um, so now I'm moving on to the area around the eyes and the forehead and you can see that my strokes are getting a lot shorter here and a lot more dense because I'm trying to imitate the appearance of shorter hair here so <clears throat> I'm really uh, going to try to make sure that the length of my strokes matches the matches the actual appearance of the fur and by the way all of, all of this is done uh, using a tapered stroke so this is a tapered one, uh, one directional stroke I am not scribbling I am not uh, dragging my pencil up and down or left and right I am using uh, tapered strokes in a single direction and you can see that I'm trying to make sure that some of these strokes overlap so that I can get more density and volume and once I go over everything with a brush you can see how much softer uh, fluffier it becomes and how much more volume we are getting so there are a couple of areas on the head which have a little bit darker fur uh, around the eyebrows or around the eyes in the middle of the forehead and on the side here around the temples so I'm just trying to match the distribution of lighter and darker hair as well I decided to put in a little more detail around the ears but for these darker areas here on the sides of the head and around the eyes I'm using a soft charcoal pencil the thing is that when you're doing everything with charcoal uh, even when you're using a medium charcoal pencil eventually you'll realize that it's not dark enough because it's all relative if you've been using mostly a medium charcoal pencil uh, you're going to need something darker than that for the darker areas if I started out with a lighter pencil if I were for example working in graphite I would probably uh, I would probably use, be using something a lot less dark so contrast and range of value is important but when my midtones are already fairly dark I need even darker ones uh, for, for these darkest bits around the eyes and the ears and under the head around the neck and so on I think my camera is a little bit out of focus here but it's gonna get better I think so there are some very short hairs around the eyes here but I also have to be careful because this area is a lot lighter so I'm trying to keep it a little bit lighter and there's a large area of lighter almost white hair here on the sides of the face around the cheeks I guess if you can call those cheeks I don't really know the proper terminology when it comes to 
the wolf's anatomy. <clears throat> I'm going to do uh, some work on the other eye here. Same thing. I'm using a combination of the soft and medium charcoal pencil. The soft pencil for the pupil and the darker areas. And the rest of it I spread with uh, Dottilion, leaving a small highlight. Occasionally I tried using a bit of graphite pencil for some of the finer, lighter hairs, but I'm not really sure if those will be visible. So eventually I decided that I need to do most of the work with a medium charcoal pencil and reserve the soft charcoal pencil for the darkest areas and that I'm just going to pull some highlights later using, a, using an eraser. In terms of which eraser I used, I mostly used a pencil eraser, except for a few areas here and there, but I mostly used a pencil eraser because I find it, found it very convenient when uh, drawing these lighter hairs. If I tried to do the same with a kneaded eraser, it would not only take longer, but it, I would constantly, constantly need to reshape my needed eraser and I also find that once I bury the charcoal into the grain of the paper using brushes uh, rubbing it with a pencil eraser probably works a lot better so I softened this large area of longer fur under the neck and this area is also going to, going to be a little bit darker So this area here is a lot lighter and I'm kind of trying to create a little more distance between my strokes and keeping them very light. But I'm going to be blending that as well using a brush. <coughs> So occasionally I'm going back and adding some more darker hairs and now I'm working on the nose. Uh, the nose here is uh, fairly simple. I'm just going to use a combination of a medium and soft charcoal pencil. These darker areas where the nostrils are and the shadow on the side that's going to be done with a soft charcoal pencil and the lighter areas I'm just going to go over them gently with a medium charcoal pencil and then I'm going to blend that trying to leave a little bit of texture on the top side of the nose so that it doesn't look too smooth but the area around the nose also has a little bit of short but darker hair so I'm going to have to try to imitate that using either a combination of very very short strokes or a scribbling motion to make it look like uh, there's some very short dark hair around the nose even though the snout itself is uh, of lighter color than the rest of the head I worked around the other ear and I'm gonna to have to pull some highlights these finer lighter hairs inside it as well but at this point I thought that it was safe for me to do a little bit more of the background so I again I sharpened one of my charcoal pencils and I put down some of the sharpening res residue and used it as charcoal powder and then used the, the largest brush that I have to spread it around and to blend it as evenly as I can and at the same time trying to leave a little bit of variation in the background like maybe some areas of lighter and darker value nothing specific 
but maybe just some suggestions of shapes in the background. I'm going to leave that to the viewer's imagination. But, but I'm going to want a cleaner line between the snout and the background. I'm going to clean that up later with a with an eraser. Right now it looks a little bit blurry, but I'm going to fix that. So like I said, this is one of the largest brushes that I have, or the largest one, I think. And it's very good to use a larger brush if you want to blend an area more evenly. And again, I used some vine charcoal to make this background even smoother. Vine charcoal is easily moved, but when I combine it with uh, uh, compressed charcoal and when I push it in with a brush it's not that much of a problem in terms of smudging. <clears throat> so here I used a pencil eraser to start adding some lighter hairs inside the ear. But initially I found that I kind of overdid it a little bit and I wasn't really happy with the way it looked, so I softened it uh, with a brush and decided that less is more in this case. So as you can see, I went over it with a brush and softened everything a little bit and just added fewer of these hairs and I kind of liked the way it looked. Uh, looked after that. I'm going to try to do something similar on the other side as well. But this ear should, should be a little bit simpler because we can see less of it. Because it's kind of turning away from us. I'm also drawing these smaller hairs on the edge of the ear so that the ears would really stand out against the background. And I did the same thing on the top of the head as well. I felt that the area above the eyes needed to be a little bit softer, so I added a little bit of vine charcoal and uh, blended it before I start working with a, uh, with a pencil eraser and adding in some more highlights, which is what you see me doing now. I'm trying to add some variation to these darker areas by pulling some highlights so that we have a combination of uh, lighter and darker hair but as I mentioned previously I can't get caught up too much in it because I need to remember uh, where the darker areas and where the lighter areas are and I can't and I have to make sure that I don't uh, make the darker areas too light so I have to keep the contrast and the range of value while at the same time working on the texture and detail. And so far I think it's looking good. The thing about this pencil eraser is that it works pretty well, but occasionally you have to resharpen it and cut off the tip so that you have a nice clean edge. I occasionally just rub it against my clothes, so that sometimes does the trick, but you often lose the edge that way and you have to resharpen it, and uh, that way it works a little bit better. So I softened the fur, the, this light fur on the sides of the face a little bit using a totillion and now I'm moving on to this area of short hair on top of the snout. This area required a little bit of patience. It's not overly complex, it's just that there's so much short hair here that I had to be patient. And these darker dots that I'm drawing in that's where the whiskers will be. 
So we have some area areas of or patches of small, very small uh, patches of darker value where the whiskers are growing. These are going to be black or almost completely black. And this is the darker area above the nose which is a little bit darker and again there's some very short hair here. You can see that I cleaned up the right side of the snout to the, the edge to the right. So now the snout stands out a lot better against the background but I'm going to have to do the same thing with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the head to the right. And now I'm drawing these uh, darker areas around the gums in the mouth. Uh, I also use the soft charcoal pencil for that because this area needs to be really dark. And I'm kind of softening that a little bit and pushing the charcoal downwards using a tutillion to try to create some uh, soft tra softer transitions. And I also used a very sharp medium pencil to add in these details, like these tiny darker areas in between these shorter hairs. Uh, all of this is in time lapse now, but it took a little bit more time. It took a little bit of patience. Whenever you have this area of short fur, uh, that, that always uh, takes a little bit longer to draw. I find that longer fur actually uh, is easier to draw because uh, you have to be less careful with your strokes you can allow your hand to work more freely with these shorter uh, uh, with the shorter fur you really have to be careful because that might ruin the appearance of the animal well not exactly ruin it it would still look like a wolf but the fur wouldn't look very realistic that's why it's important to remember those rules when drawing the fur that you have to match the direction in which the fur grows and you have to um, and you have to uh, match the length. You can see how I pulled some of these whiskers using a medium charcoal pencil but at the base I added a touch of soft charcoal pencil for these darker areas. So the hairs stand out nicely now and I'm just adding a few more hairs to these uh, areas of darker value on the head before I move on to the neck. So I think I achieved a nice transition here on the snout and another trick that I used for this very very short hair near the nose I just uh, used the side of the pencil and scribbled a little bit to produce uh, a texture that kinda looks like really really short hair because I couldn't really do that if I tried to uh, draw single dots or really really short strokes so I used the side of the pencil and I scribbled a little bit and it kind of looks like really short hair and I created a nice transition from uh, really dark to lighter value so we have some longer fur here on the sides of the face uh, near the neck and it's also the fur is also a little bit lighter here so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it a little bit lighter, but but it's in the shadow, so I need to shade it as well. So I'm pushing pushing some charcoal over it, and I worked a little bit over it uh, with tortillions. Here I decided to use my pencil eraser to pull some additional highlights on some of the lighter areas, like around the eyes and on the sides of the face, and maybe uh, to do some of these fly away longer hairs on the sides of the head and to give them more structure maybe like some of them are overlapping uh, you know so that it feels like there's some more density there like the fur is really thick so it's very important for me to try to, uh, to create some depth by making some of these hairs overlap and adding a few more touches here on the right side of the of the head and on the top of the head as well. I really want the 
I, I really want a lot of contrast between the background and the head and my main subject because I want to, I want the main subject to stand out. Contrast is really important, contrast with the background. And there are some more um, whiskers, I guess, around the eyebrows here. Um, I'm just going to create some more charcoal powder and work on the rest of the background because my main subject is mostly done. I just have to do a little bit of refining uh, on the neck and on the area around the chest and on the lower jaw but once I do that yeah, I'm pretty much done but I'm not really happy with the amount of value in this lower portion of the paper I need to make that darker but first I made it a little bit smoother using a combination of compressed charcoal and vine charcoal and going over it with my brush but, uh, but then I just decided to add some more charcoal to this bottom area and just blend it in as best as I can so that so that it matches the upper portion of the paper. You see I want to create some balance in terms of value not just in terms of composition so I just added some more value to the lower part of the paper. And then I wasn't happy with uh, this area of the neck to the right, uh, to the left sorry, because I felt like I needed to make a lot more of it darker so that it will make sense. I just had this um, single dark area which didn't really make sense so I kind of decided to extend it upwards and downwards to make it look like all of this part of the body is in the shadow and then I'm gonna start pulling some highlights on top of that to make it look like actual fur. Here I'm using a similar approach like when I'm drawing grass or bushes or something like that. When I have a really dark background I start working on top of that with a pencil eraser pulling some highlights and you also notice that I'm varying my pressure some, somewhere I want to create a cleaner uh, shape or a cleaner edge somewhere in some places I want to uh, just take off just a little bit of value uh, that is my way of creating more depth in that fur. Now another trick that I used here uh, is that I used a brush to soften the fur uh, on the neck and the chest because I want that fur to be uh, not, not just softer but to feel, uh, to feel like it's just a little bit out of focus. I want the focus to be on the head and that's why, where I want the lines to be sharp and that's where I want the largest amount of contrast here on the sides uh, on, on the neck and the further we go away from the face of our subject I want everything to be to be a little bit more blurry and a little bit less defined but I don't really need to make it completely blurry I can just go over it with a brush just a little bit and that way that area will draw less attention because there will be less focus So I really want uh, the viewer to focus mostly on the on the areas around the ears and the eyes first. <clears throat> I put down some finishing touches and I'm going to sign the drawing here in the lower right corner and I use the soft charcoal pencil for that because I already have a dark background so I thought maybe a soft charcoal pencil would stand out because I didn't I didn't want to use uh, an eraser to draw my signature but the drawing is now done I zoomed in a little bit so that you can see the detail on the fur and the eyes And uh, once again, this is what it looks like when I zoom out. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see longer real-time videos, go check out my Patreon. 
and I have lots of other drawings of animals and landscape and portraits you should check those out as well so I'm gonna put some links to other videos check those out as well thank you for watching and bye